we're fighting villains and kicking off our glass slippers. That's right, it's Munchkin Disney from The Op. In Munchkin Disney, players take on the role of ultimate Disney fans, outwitting the many villains and monsters throughout the Magical Kingdom. The first player to complete enough feats to reach level 10 wins the game. Setup begins with the roll cards. Randomly deal one to each player along with a plastic tracker. Roll cards have a name, art, ability, and chart for levels 1 through 10. Next, separately shuffle the door deck and treasure deck. Then deal four cards from each deck to every player. Set the decks face down in the middle of the game area, leaving room for separate discard piles as well. Ensure all players have a personal play area in front of them, where cards will be placed throughout the game. The eight cards form their starting hand and should be hidden from other players. At the end of a player's turn, they may have a maximum of five cards in hand. Randomly select a first player or choose the person who can recite the most Disney villains in 30 seconds. Jafar, Scar, Ursula, the Pumpkin, and Cinderella. Somebody else is gonna start. Players set their trackers to level one on their roll card and may look at their hand. Before beginning the game, players can set any class, item, or ally cards into their play area. Gameplay occurs in turns, each divided into three phases. Kick open the door, look or loot, and charity. First up, in the kick open the door phase, the active player draws and reveals the top card from the door deck. Let's look at some of the cards that could be revealed. A monster. The active player must now battle this monster and resolve combat rules. More on those in a sec. They will skip the look or loot phase this turn. A curse. The active player takes the penalty listed and either discards it or places it in their play area depending on the listing. If a curse is drawn by some other method, a player may keep it in their hand and play it on another player at any time. It's mean, but also effective. A class or motivation card. Classes in Munchkin Disney include princess, hero, companion, or fairy godmother, and they each come with a special ability. The active player may take it into their hand to play later or put it into their personal play area immediately to gain its benefits. Players may also discard class cards at any time if they don't wish to continue playing that class. An ally card. Each player can have one active ally accompany their character in the game. Allies provide ongoing benefits and abilities. If a player ever wishes to play a new ally, they must discard their current one. Allies can also help players run away from combat. More on that in a sec, I promise. Other cards, including Monster Enhancers and Super Munchkin cards, alter the gameplay rules in fun and dangerous ways. Follow the card's instructions when revealed. Next, in the Look or Loot phase, if a player didn't fight a monster in combat, they may choose between two of the following options. Look for trouble by playing a monster card from their hand and immediately fighting it, just as if they'd encountered a monster in the kick down the door phase. Or they may loot the room and draw another card from the door deck, but this time they have the option of not playing the card immediately and instead keeping it in their hand to play later. Finally, in the charity phase, if the active player has more than five cards in their hand, they must either play or discard cards until they are at or under the hand limit of five. Some options for playing cards include giving other players curses, placing items to their personal play area, or even selling items from their hand. Once the charity phase is complete, the next player's turn begins. Gameplay continues until one player reaches level 10 to win the game. Here's a few important game concepts to understand. Combat. To resolve a fight, players compare the monster's combat strength with their own combat strength. However, many cards and abilities can alter these numbers. To start, a player's combat strength is their level, plus any bonuses from class abilities, items, allies, or penalties from curses. 
A monster's combat strength is its level, plus or minus modifiers from powers or cards in play. After tallying the scores, if the monster's strength equals or exceeds the active players, that player loses the combat and must run away. When running away, the active player rolls the die and on a five or more escapes without harm, but don't get a chance to level up or gain treasure. If the player rolls under a five, bad stuff happens as listed on the monster's card. This can vary from losing an item, losing some levels, or even death. However, if the player's combat strength exceeds the monsters at the end of the tally, they defeat the monster. They gain one or two levels depending on the opponent, and they can draw a number of treasure cards as listed on the monster card. During combat, other players may play cards out of turn in order to affect the strengths of the fighters or the outcome of the fight. The target of such effects is up to the player using the card, though. It could be another player, or even the monster. Speaking of other players, sometimes a fight with a monster can be too overwhelming, or may even involve multiple monsters. In combat, the active player always has the option of asking for help, by offering some of the treasure rewards if they can help defeat the monster. Only one player can accept the offer, and once they do, they add their combat strength, along with any cards they play, to the active player's total. The outcome of the fight now affects both players, including if they have to run away. They both roll the die for their own outcome. If they can defeat the monster, the rewards from the treasure deck are drawn face up, and according to the deal they made, one of the players selects their choices first. Some other key concepts. Items have an equip icon and a value along with their benefit. The equip icon shows the limit of item type each character can have. One of each headgear, armor, footgear, or hands. Either one two-handed item or up to two one-handed items. Players can sell their items on their turn. If they can discard items worth at least 1,000 gold pieces, they immediately gain one level. Players can also trade items with other players, but only items that are on their play areas, not from their hands. Players can trade at any time, except if they are in combat. Death is not the end of the game. If a character dies, they lose all cards in their play area and their hand, except for their class, motivation, and current level. The dead character may now choose a new roll card to play, or retry their current roll card reincarnation. The other players, in order of the highest level, get to choose one of the discarded cards to keep for themselves. They're looting the body. At the start of the dead player's next turn, they draw four face-down cards from each deck and continue play. Like all Munchkin variants, Munchkin Disney has a few specific rules, including cards with the Disney Magic label, which provide bonus abilities and effects if the activating player can quote a line or hum a tune from a Disney film. Careful though, a player cannot repeat a quote or song that was already used in the current game. Check the rulebook for other variants. The game ends once a player has reached level 10 by defeating a monster, or if they complete a specific winning objective stated on a card. Players can never force another player to help them reach level 10, but once they reach it, they become the ultimate Disney fan and win the game. And that's Munchkin Disney. I'm Becca Scott, and you're watching Good Time Society. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you want to join in on more good times, you can join us on Discord and Patreon. We'll see you next time.